इस इनिंग्स की शुरुआत म्यूचुअल फंड से कर थोड़े थोड़े पैसे एस के जरिए म्यूचुअल फंड में इन्वेस्ट कर सही समय पर ये काम आए फिर से म्यूचुअल फंड सही है म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना से जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान से पढ़ें। The 2022 New Zealand World Cup is four months away, but we have a tournament that's going to determine the final three spots there. Uh, for teams who are going to compete in New Zealand for the 50 over World Cup with defending champions England having won at their home nine teams are participating in the tournament in Zimbabwe where in we will see which three teams will qualify for that World Cup and the next two teams that is a total of five teams who will play the next set of ICC Women's ODI Championship I have with me former Pakistan cricketer Marina Iqbal and Ananya Upendran as experts for to preview the ICC Women's World Cup Global Qualifiers. Marina, welcome to the show. Ananya, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, first up, uh, let's let me directly start with what the bigger picture is. Uh, we all know that the bigger picture is that World Cup. qualifiers um the teams get a chance to play at the world cup um uh, nearly uh, we've been hit by covid this has been uh, postponed by at least three times now uh, from july of 2020 to july of 2021 from sri lanka to now zimbabwe uh, finally we are seeing it marina your first thoughts there well definitely i mean for me the bigger picture is more teams are coming up uh, in this platform the associated teams working their way up and that is a uh, really delightful for me to see i mean the amount of cricket nowadays uh, the players are getting and the platforms they are getting that is a very big plus for women cricket globally but yes definitely for talking about the qualifiers i'm really glad to see some uh, new teams and uh, the excitement in participating and the build up for this uh, tournament it has been brilliant So uh, Ananya what's what's there at stake that's the top 3 uh, qualifying spots but not only the top 3 uh, suppose you don't finish in the top 3 still you will be vying for that fourth and fifth spot how important is it going to be for teams like say Thailand or Ireland of the world who've been there who've been dominating sort of T20s in associate cricket but have never uh, got a chance to play uh, against the bigger teams on a regular basis Yeah I think um you know there's so much at stake uh, in these qualifiers it's not just like you said the top 3 positions it's also those fourth and fifth positions because um we know the ICC Women's ODI Championship is being expanded to include 10 teams so that's two more teams and you know we've seen over well since the ODI Championship was introduced how much teams like Pakistan like South Africa have improved um in these last eight years where they've uh they've had consistent series against the top ranked nations it used to be you know pakistan playing maybe sri lanka and west indies a lot but now they're playing south africa they're playing against um australia new zealand england much more regularly because you know they have to so to have maybe an ireland or a thailand or a zimbabwe included in that I, in that odi championship will will not mean um you know will mean so much not just for women's cricket but for those teams and their developments as well so there's a lot at stake as it's it's going to be a very very exciting tournament and um you know it's not just about those top 3 teams it's it's much more than that it's much more than that is what ananya says we've seen uh, that uh, how much the icc odi championship has uh, changed it for teams like pakistan or sri lanka because they were not playing regular against the top 3 the top 4 countries uh, how much that has changed in the last 8 years it's it's kind of compulsory that you have to play a set of at least 3 odi series against a team in a span of 4 years uh, to play the world cup uh i'm sure that's going to change a lot of things for that fourth and fifth team maybe ireland maybe the netherlands maybe thailand maybe someone else uh, somebody is bringing a surprise uh let's let's come down to the format uh it's it's of uh, so uh, what we understand is uh, there are two groups the first group is of four teams the second group is of five five teams the reason the first group is of four teams is because png uh 
are kind of unavailable uh because of covid reasons um, they they were in a facility in png itself uh, a few members tested positive and hence they couldn't travel down to zimbabwe to play the global qualifier so the first group is now of four uh, teams itself uh, the top 3 teams of each group qualify and play the super 6 uh, there is no semi final there is no final so each team plays the other team you have the point system the top 3 uh, teams on the point system qualify the fourth and the fifth team including uh, and the top 3 teams and the five teams uh, already qualified for the new zealand world cup play the next round of icc women's odi championship let's come down to uh, what we have from group a um, the four teams west indies uh, slightly favorites sri lanka this is going to be their first international tournament since march of 2020 uh, we can uh, we cannot believe it but that's what it is and that's how it is happening uh, ireland have a lot of plenty to play for and netherlands could be the dark horses um Marina, let me come to you. Uh, how do you define this particular group? Uh, which team are you excited about? Who's going to dominate? Which are the players you want to look for? Well, definitely, West Indies has a very big chance. And uh, talking about other two, I would love to see Ireland uh, grabbing this opportunity. They've been around playing some good cricket. Especially, there a lot of change has been seen when the uh, central contracts were induced, and uh, they look more professional now and more stable. So I would love them to uh, probably grab this opportunity and become a more stable team. I'm uh, talking about Sri Lanka. Yes, they haven't played any international cricket that can play a big role. But uh, again, I think that they have some experienced players, and uh, they do depend on uh, a lot on Atta Patu. But I also like uh, Harshita. She's been developing and evolving a lot. So yes, there can be a mix in matches. But again, it all depends on how they approach this uh, tournament because. they've known that to come back and make a good comebacks and play a stable cricket but definitely west indies ireland and sri lanka probably uh, i think are the pick pickups for this group so marina uh, clearly says uh, not netherlands but the other three teams will qualify for the super six ananya your thoughts on this particular group yeah i think i have to agree with with marina of west indies i feel like when you look at the group are probably the runaway favorites simply because of the firepower and and you know the superstars in their lineup um but again we have seen with west indies that they are so heavily dependent on those superstars that sometimes when they don't click um they are vulnerable um so it you know it will be interesting to see when they're put under pressure of how they how they do react to that but um yeah i i do feel like west indies are probably favorites sri lanka under a new coach this time so that will be interesting to see how their approach changes if it changes at all um because they've had several training camps um over the last while i i know they haven't played international cricket but they've been together um since july um training on and off so um it will be interesting how to see i mean to see how they you know come forward in this tournament but again i'm very excited about ireland as well uh, i feel like players like gabby lewis um she she was involved in the 100 she played a bit in the rhf trophy and She's just been scoring runs for fun over the last while and I think it will be a big test for her to come out here uh you know in a global tournament with qualification on the line and with Ireland having a realistic chance of actually you know pushing into that top 3 um I I I'm really excited to see how they come and and um respond to the pressure but yeah I I agree with Marina's choices uh, for the super six uh, Marina uh, just coming down to that particular point you played cricket at that level Uh, Sri Lanka yes they have been practicing it together but how different is it practicing together and then playing competitive matches against uh, fellow international teams they're not pl- they've not played in 18 months so how big a disadvantage that is for Sri Lanka definitely there is a psychological effect i mean you can have camps you can play competitive uh, competitive cricket within your group but playing at international cricket it's all different ball game given the pressure of this tournament and obviously the teams uh, not the even big names but the smaller ones they are evolving very quickly so there is a certain pressure on you to obviously keep up your maintain your position and your name otherwise also uh, added that you have to qualify for the world cup yes again i would say that international cricket is a different uh, scenario its pressure is totally different 
individually talking about uh, players whenever they come into international cricket and they haven't played much uh, you can have a troll on yourself but i think that given the fact they are practicing um they are experienced players they have to let that fact go that they haven't played any inter- international cricket it's not their fault but yes they have to focus and be positive about this because right now what they do matters and uh, with no excuses i think they will be coming into this tournament and i think um sorry yash just one thing that i i would like to ask marina is this is actually going to be sri lanka's first tournament international series without shashikala sirivardhane a big big player for them she's kind of carried the team alongside uh, atapattu for a while so you know for the players going into a tournament like this without someone like that for the very first time um, you know how do you think that will play on their minds uh definitely that's another big hit for them because when you have a player a leader like shashi uh, she had played a huge part in keeping this group contained uh, even under pressure even the even, even in such circumstances they, where they were not developing or evolving there was such a phase in their uh, uh, cricketing times but i think that it will play a huge role but yes again i would say that you need to rely on the given squad you need the senior players have to step up and i am sure that shashi had uh, obviously uh, made a huge impact in developing the mindset for the sri lankan team and how they approach the games and uh, i am sure that she will be in touch with them as well but right now again how every individual and how atta patu will approach this tournament will depend a lot and how she actually uh, probably played the main role to keep the youngsters and the, uh, the other team players into one certain place and be positive about it so marina says it's all going to be positive for sri lanka they've not played uh, a lot of international <laughs> cricket ananya adds uh, shashikala sirivardhane is not there uh, she's retired from international cricket going to be it's going to be a lot on the shoulders of chamari atta patu who's coming from perth scorchers um, yeah so group a almost there sri lanka uh west indies heavy favorites they played decent amount of international cricket in the last 12 months uh, starting with england and recently against pakistan um and uh, of course ireland uh, everybody wants them to win uh, i don't know the reason why but yeah everybody wants them to win uh, probably the irish luck is on them and uh, ireland qualify maybe in the top 3 play the world cup uh, let's come down to group b uh, marina uh, will uh, will speak a lot on this because uh pakistan heavy favorites here uh, they are the top ranked side uh, unlucky to qualify directly uh, we can say that uh, their series against india got cancelled the points got split and that is a major reason why pakistan is playing this global qualifiers but they will be without bisma maroof uh, uh yeah. javeria khan's javeria khan's performance is not uh, greatest uh, right now she's coming from covid uh how important this is going to be for pakistan marina well definitely it's not going to be easy um, i mean again i would say that uh, pakistan hasn't been delivering uh, the results they were expected to uh, given the fact that they have regularly played cricket since last september they've got two good uh, probably three good uh, series international series one with south africa two with west indies uh, going into west indies we uh, probably the squad of 26 players went there just to finalize and give chances to more players uh, looking into the qualifiers and now playing west indies recently but yes uh, bisma maroof had a huge role to play uh, quite similar of shashi in being uh, the stable head for the team uh, and being a exceptional leader and also one of the back bones for the batting uh, but javeria uh, took up the role and uh, it's not easy when an individual is not performing uh with her skill she has been struggling in batting added the pressure of the captaincy and the results were not in a favor so it's never easy for an in- individual but i think that uh, with other counterparts like nida alia diana beg now sidra nawaz has uh, been established as a senior player as well uh, some youngsters umaima and muniba are grabbing up to the roles uh, they've got a very good squad uh, there's no doubt about it but when it comes to being practical in the ground and implement whatever they are learning that's where they're struggling uh, i've been in touch with some players they they are positive and they have a very good mindset coming into this tournament even though the results were not on their sides 
but yes again javedia is being very positive uh, she knows how important this tournament is not for only pakistan right now but given the fact that we've been talking a lot about the grassroots and the structure uh, back in pakistan this will set the tone uh, obviously but again it will not be easy uh, starting off with bangladesh they're a very good side they've got really good spinners uh, they're very experienced side very gelled not big names but whenever they come into the field everyone gives their part everyone takes responsibility and they are that sort of team where you have to be very particular against each and every player so such teams are really hard to beat so given the conditions i think that pakistan will have to work hard and bring their a game from the game first another team which marina just spoke about is bangladesh pakistan bangladesh is the first game of the tournament uh, bangladesh also haven't played till last month they just played a series against uh, zimbabwe uh, won it quite one sided without their new captain nigar sultana jyoti uh, ananya how big um, bangladesh are going to be a threat in this tournament uh, and do you see them qualify in the top 3 Well, look, I think um, Bangladesh have a, a very realistic chance of pushing for that top three. Uh, like Marina said, I think that first game against Pakistan is really going to set the tone, not just for the tournament, but for them as well. I think if they manage to cause, it, and let's be frank, it will be an upset if they beat them. But if they manage to do that, I think it will throw um, both groups wide open because remember the teams carry the points from the, the group stage into the Super Six. So. um that will be a big result um if if that happens but it they are going to be a very very tough um cookie to crack because of uh, if there are a lot of experienced players i think they have a really good bowling attack sometimes that batting lineup as much talent as they have it tends to fall apart under pressure um we saw that in the t20 world cup as well where they had a really good chance to beat new zealand but then you know crumbled under pressure so they've got a really solid bowling attack a lot of variety in their um, jahanara alam has has been bowling beautifully with the new ball um salma khatun i think is one of the smartest spinners going around in international cricket and not just um you know i think overall she's she's one of the smartest spinners going around so they have some really really quality bowlers and i think that that could put a lot of pressure on pakistan and which means that you know they do have a really realistic chance of pushing into that top 3 but look i'm i feel like the way bangladesh have kind of gone in these global tournaments you feel like they they promise a lot but then they end up faltering towards the end so i think they will they they should definitely get into that top 5 whether they'll actually qualify for the world cup is a big question but they do have a great chance and and hopefully they come out all guns blazing and like ireland actually really push these other three teams into saying that you know hey we're here and we can actually challenge you so bangladesh uh, would be worthy challengers is what we understand there are three more teams which are playing in that particular group host zimbabwe uh, thailand can they do another uh, t20 world cup uh, they they've done it previously maybe the 50 over world cup is something on their horizons now and united states of america a team uh, which always wins the america's qualifiers uh, but doesn't perform really well at the global level so uh, marina i'll start with you these three teams what what's your what's your take well definitely it's good to see zimbabwe and usa and thailand also coming into the circuit they are obviously uh, new but the way they are evolving it's uh, pretty good and i've said that before for the women cricket globally it's a really good sign especially if i talk about usa under julia price they are on the right track uh, not much achievements but given the fact that they started to settle in this uh, the setup and in, in this game but yes talking about thailand uh, they are a pretty good side uh, and why i say that they are limited but technically sound and when you place against such team it's hard to crack them uh, I, you all would have remember the t20 world cup against pakistan they scored 150 and at that time our bowling side was pretty good but again the thing was they were technically technically sound and they knew exactly what their strength and weaknesses were and they capitalized on it so they and again they are a very commendable fielding side so these are little facts that are their positives um, yes uh, i feel that usa and zimbabwe might not have 
more of a chance but thailand given the fact that they are united they love the challenge they enjoy the game uh, they can give some scares to the bigger names as well and also to pakistan given the fact their morale was pretty good in t20 but for a longer format these three teams uh, i'm not sure how and where they will stand because for a shorter format uh, usa zimbabwe and thailand looks pretty good uh coming to bangladesh they might not be good or strong in t20 that's not their forte but for the one day cricket they look pretty uh, commendable side so uh, talking about these three teams my pick from them is definitely thailand so uh marina says it's going to be thailand bangladesh and pakistan in the super 6 ananya uh thailand is one team you practiced in pune you you know a lot of these inside stories uh do you do you back them or you feel it's going to be zimbabwe probably pushing their case um i'd i'd back thailand um one because of all the reasons marina said but also because um of the coach that they have harshal pathak i think is someone who's just very very meticulous in the way he plans um and they're very good one of the things that stood out for me about thailand in that t20 world cup was just the way they planned and the way they executed their plan so you could see the way they dismissed danny wyatt the way they dismissed amy jones where they bowled to the to the um, west indies players they they were they were very clear with what they wanted to do sometimes the execution wasn't great but the plans were wonderful so with someone like harshal pathak you know that he's gone back done you know watched a dozen videos watched every single game that the you know the other teams have played and he's gone back and and sat with the new captain chai wai and and really worked out plans maybe sat with the bowlers as well so that's one area that i think thailand are well ahead of of a lot of other teams so i think they'll definitely give the other teams a, a run for their money um and will be i suppose they'll be disappointed if they don't get into that super six stage because um when you compare them with zimbabwe and usa you'd back them um but i'm just going to throw a curveball and say in 2011 usa beat zimbabwe in the world cup qualifiers um it was their last 50 over game i think as an international team um and they beat zimbabwe by one run um and i think shabani baskar who is now their vice captain was 17 year old and scored 72 so she was the you know the the one who, who the architect of that victory for USA she's still around there so you know i, I i'm not going to say that they're going to do something like that it'll be a huge upset if they do but i think they'll they'll want to at least stir the the pot and and you know make a mark push maybe even push one of the teams but like marina said i think maybe for zimbabwe and usa it may be a bridge too far i i definitely back thailand So a stat has come from a decade before, uh, where in US has beat beaten Zimbabwe by one run. They'll they'll want to do the same probably now. Uh, Marina, coming here, I I want to ask you one question. Uh, how different? Uh, how difficult rather it will be for teams like say Netherlands or Thailand, who are more T twenty setups to acclimatize to this ODI format. Very different types of format. uh because the players they themselves uh, have not played a lot of this uh, odi format how difficult is it going to be for the teams and the players in general it will be difficult because uh, coming from short term format into the longer ones you have to think a lot uh, especially talking about the physical fitness that is the first thing uh, that players face difficulty in adjusting and then you have to have your plans for the longer formats you have to have the right combinations and overall as a team you have to have that sort of will to capitalize on the opportunities given uh, for this tournament i think fielding for these sides uh, will play a very crucial role uh, especially against the bigger teams because uh, if you drop few catches of the big names they will probably not give another chance but yes uh, again i picked up thailand over south africa um, sorry uh, usa and uh, zimbabwe because of the fact that I feel that physically they are very fit team uh, they love the challenges and uh, they also don't have more experience for the longer formats but you can sense that they love to adjust to the challenge and yes again talking about the change in formats the more they play the more they uh, learn how to adjust for the longer formats for the longer overs how to develop their innings how to develop their bowling strengths the more they will play against the better teams they will try and they will obviously learn and get better and better but for now uh, it will be difficult for them 
it's it's always going to be difficult to adjust from a 20 over format which you are quite comfortable with to a 50 over format marina says it's mean because of the fielding and the fitness uh, you 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 don't have that zeal of standing 8 hours or 9 hours there on the ground playing doing the same stuff a lot of strategies have to work out uh, let me uh, come down to the closure of the show a few questions directly um, give me three players uh, each um, each of you uh, who do you feel are the players to watch out for this to- particular tournament marina i'll start with you uh, well for me from west indies it has to be danda dotton i mean uh, she has evolved uh, for a longer format, she's opening up uh, the innings and I've seen her play against her nature. So it's a good thing to see, but we all know how destructive she can be. Uh, from Bangladesh, I would love to see Fazana Haq. She's been uh, evolved as a cricketer. So I think that a lot depends on her batting as well. Uh, yes, there are pretty good spinners in their side, but I, I like the way she likes to play and dominate the opposition. And uh, from other thing, I really li- like Gabby Lewis. Uh, I like her temperament. I like the way she approaches the game. So, yes, these these three players would be my pick. Okay, so Ananya is not allowed to choose Gabby Lewis now. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, look, I since Marina's gone all batters, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be team bowler, continue to be team bowler. Uh, Look, I'm really excited. I love what I've seen of Fatima Sana so far. So someone I'm really keen on seeing how she goes um, is Fatima Sana. Um, Orla Prendergast, again, from Ireland, someone I, I've enjoyed. But, I mean, I think she's, she's great with the ball. She's great with the bat as well. So again, someone um, very exciting. Um, and uh, I'm, because I practiced, played with Thailand, I'm going to say Nataya Buchatam. Uh, again, she's she's a very senior player, but she's just such a smart bowler, and seems like she she has this very very calm um, exterior. Very, uh, I think the the team kind of gravitates towards her. She she just settles everyone in and says, "Hey, don't worry, I'm here. I'll I'll do the job." So yeah, three bowlers for me would be Buchatam, Prandagast, and um, Fatima Sana. So Ananya and Marina have given you six players who you should have in your fantasy teams. Uh, go to Fantasy Akada, download, select this particular players. Um, coming, uh, coming here, uh, top run scorer of the tournament. Uh, I'll start with Ananya. Oh God, um, <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna go for an opener, so I'll say dot dot in because I I don't want Marina to pick her, so I'm saying Deandra dot. <laughs> Marina, who's going to be your top run scorer of the tournament? Well, I feel Stefani Taylor. Uh, she's been brilliant. She's been very uh, calculated with her approach. And yes, she has matured enough. And rec- recently, uh, she completed her 5,000 runs. And now she has learned the art to develop her innings, uh, which can be really scary for any opposite side. So yes, my pick would be Stefani Taylor. So, Dotton and Stefani Taylor could potentially be your top run scorers. Top wicket taker, Marie. That's a hard one. You've got really good bowlers in this tournament. Uh, for me, it has to be a spinner. And I would go with Salma Khatun. Salma Khatun of Bangladesh is Marina's pick. Ananya, your pick. Are you going yeah, with team is, or team is... spinner? Very difficult. No, I think it's it's going to be a spinner. I think spinners gen- generally have more success, especially in these kinds of tournaments. So, oh god, this is hard. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna say Nida that just just because no <laughs> reason. Nida uh, says Ananya. Um, now, now, now comes the main question: uh, Who are going to be your top three teams who are playing the World Cup in New Zealand? Oh, well, definitely West Indies, Pakistan, and I'm backing Bangladesh. West Indies, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. So, no Sri Lanka, no Ireland there. Ananya, your pick. Yeah, I'm going to go West Indies, Pakistan, and Ireland. Okay. So, West Indies and Pakistan uh, are the expert choices. Marina is going with Bangladesh. Ananya is going with Ireland. Nobody is giving Sri Lanka a chance right now. Uh, so, Sri Lanka probably may miss out of their 
World Cup campaign. But now let's talk about the next two teams, the fourth and the fifth team, so that we have the cohort who are going to play the next ICC Women's ODI Championship. Yeah, Sri Lanka is definitely there for me, and also Ireland. Yeah, Sri Lanka and Ireland. So, Anandi, your thoughts? Yeah, it's the- a, it's the same same group of five teams. Okay, so Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Uh, so Thailand, yes, everybody wants them to do well. Uh, probably may not uh, be that uh, at this stage uh, to be in the top five. Uh, the sixth and the sev- uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth one. Um, uh, USA, Netherlands, um, yeah, could be good in the tournament, but may not finish in the top five. The five teams that Ananya and Marina have picked are Pakistan, West Indies, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Ireland who may potentially play the next round of ICC Women's ODI Championship. This tournament, the ICC Women's World Cup Global Qualifiers begins tomorrow in Zimbabwe. You, you, will, you will hear Marina Iqbal commentating on the Pakistan games. And many more games from tomorrow. Catch the action live. We'll be uh, live with the day wraps uh, at the end of the day from tomorrow. Uh, on this presentation of Mutual Fund, Sahih Hai presents the outside view powered by Fantasy Akada. See you tomorrow. Direct plan. Mutual Fund me khud se invest karne ka ek option hai. Isse commission bach jata hai. Aray yar, jassi mujhe bata na. Direct plan me soch samajh kar invest kar, to hi fayda hai. म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना से जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान से पढ़ें।